Good morning, everyone. So we've been away for a while working on some projects, but uh, we're back going to be doing some filming and uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of shallow drilling. So we have got a Shaw portable backpack drill and we're going to be popping a hole into this showing behind me and uh, seeing what we can find. We got disseminated mineralization, pyrite, calcopyrite, galena, sphalerite, and uh, we want to see if we can find something a little bit farther into the showing. So let's take a look at some of the mineralization before we uh, pop the hole. So we've got a exposure here. It's about five meters wide and there's sporadic mineralization in areas. You can see all this area here where you have the purple colored volcanics. That's actually a mix of mineralization you take a closer look you can see there's sphalerite and galena in there which are zinc and lead sulfides we have uh, some calcopyrite in here too and pyrite a little bit of pyrotite so what we want to do is pop a hole into here maybe a good uh, meter and a half you got sporadic mineralization in quite a few areas here so uh, let's get to her so the showing actually continues you can actually find disseminated mineral along in here too and we just think it's not uh, as well exposed here so somewhere along in here we have a contact of two rock types this rock flows up this way and contacts this right here and if you actually take the direction of this and go down to the main road, you have additional showings on there. So we don't know how big this exposure is, but we know it's in a nice wide zone and uh, the zone continues for at least a kilometer. So this is the, uh, the motor here that powers the drill. This is our water. We're going to be getting a tank with a pump that we can attach to the back of the vehicle. This fits perfectly on my ATV, so it's good for going out in the bush in the hard-to-reach areas. doesn't weigh too much either. With the water full, it's about 100 pounds. These are the drill rods right here. So these are what the drill rods look like. And this over here is the diamond bit, which we're about to file down now. We've got a few spares, but what you do is you file in between every uh, couple holes and uh, the bit keeps going. So these jugs of water we pre-filled, but uh, you can fill them up at any creek or any anywhere there's clean water is kind of what we've been doing. Nice sample here. So you can see all that shiny stuff in there. That's actually sphalerite, zinc sulfide. You got this stuff right here, which is a mix of galena and sphalerite. So there's some nice samples just laying here that we've hammered off. Probably take a few. So we've actually done some assays for this loads of XRFs. So if I were to shoot this with an XRF, you'd probably be getting about 25% zinc. On average, if I were to say this rock, you'd be looking at about 20% zinc, percent copper, a couple percent lead, and a little bit of gold and some silver. So we almost got our drill bit filed down. So let's get her set up.
we're gonna drill our hole right here just to do a test and see how it works. After you've gone in a certain distance your core will stop at a certain point you got to pull it off add another rod and keep going so we're gonna actually add more water because we use quite a bit of water here it's a lot of loose material so we're trying to flush it out so this is what's called a core catcher if the core falls off or breaks and doesn't come up in your drill rod you can stick this down and uh, it's supposed to catch any intact core we had a uh, pretty poor recovery for the first little bit, but um, I think there's still some core in there, but it's still attached. We got about uh, 40 centimeters of core. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking this core out right now from here, and uh, we're gonna place it here in a line. We'll take a look at it after. I'm not gonna be too specific about how I handle this, but typically you'd wanna log this right away wash off any loose material and keep anything that's intact even all this stuff here because when you do assay this you want to cut this in half send in half keep half for reference or other purposes so this is just a quick look inside the start of the hole you can see how fractured it is in there and that's why we're getting poor recovery everything just breaks and falls to the bottom of the hole and uh, turns to a powder. So this is actually a 41 millimeter diameter core that we're pulling out. And this drill is capable of handling, I'd say depths of at least 10 meters, but uh, so far the maximum I've gone is seven meters. And um, it's not meant for replacing any major drilling. It's just meant for sampling a bit deeper. So we have drilled some really good intersections so far, so we're pretty happy with that. Some pretty nice showings have been drilled and uh, you'll hear about those in a couple months. So we hit something really weird, it's like mud. I think it's just deteriorated rock. But uh, the drill string kept filling up with water and it's not drilling anymore so we're just gonna clean this out. So we went down a meter, just over a meter, and uh, I would consider this pretty poor recovery but we hit a layer of oxidized material and this is actually just deteriorating rock with sulfides and uh, it just kept clogging the the drill rods so we're gonna stop here and just show you the core our whole purpose was just to go down a meter anyway or so and uh, kind of get an idea of the rock type and uh, if there's mineralization throughout and we know there is because this has definitely got iron sulfides in it 
So I'm going to wash a little bit of this off. I'm going to wash a little bit of this off and uh, just take a look at it. So this is a sample from the surface of where we drilled. You can see the mineralization, green volcanics. You have this burgundy looking mineral here, which is just the oxidation from presence of cadmium. This is sphalerite in here. So you got quartz, barite, a bit of calcite in here. And uh, this is kind of the start of the core where it's all crumbly. I know we're missing some in here because uh, a whole bunch fell out. But uh, you have some mineralization in here, sphalerite. Then in here, you got little specks of pyrite and pyrotite. And there's little tiny little stringers in here of sphalerite. Not a whole lot, but a few. And then as you get farther down, a little bit more sphalerite in here. And it's sort of disseminated in the rock. It's pretty evenly spread throughout. You have little patches here where you have sphalerite. We hit another patch of uh, deteriorated stuff in here and it was definitely just a bundle of sulfides. You got a nice big band in here of pyrite. As you move down here, you see all the purple in there, but you can also see all that black. That's sphalerite. So you have quite a bit of mineralization in this piece as you go farther. And at this point is kind of where we hit that really, really gossinous rock here. And this is from that. There's definite sulfized confirmed under the loop. So it's pretty typical in this area. We find gossinous rock, which consists of pyrite and a little bit of sphalerite. And then that kind of overlies your mineralization, um, your, your veining. So I definitely think there's something pretty nice about this showing. So I definitely recommend based on this and uh, what we're seeing at surface, following and doing a whole bunch more holes, shallow holes and finding anywhere where there's better mineralization, kind of getting a better sample of the depth as well as across the entire showing. And that way we can kind of get a nice reading of uh, grades. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see us drill more, then uh, like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the next one.